This is the next step of the uh, GIS Canada mapping instructions. We get down near the end now. So the map is made, and we just want to do the layout uh, to get it sort of ready for printing. And then rather than printing, we're just going to export it as a JPEG. So here's where we go. Right now we're in data view, but we can go to layout view. And there it is. That's a look at the page. Now, I've already changed that to landscape. Originally, it was in portrait view. And it would have looked like that. But that's not uh, really a good shape when you're dealing with Canada, which is more east-west than it is north-south. So I recommend you go to File, Page and Print Setup, Landscape. And that turns the page sideways landscape. Then, here's a bunch of elements that I'm going to take off because I had them on previously. And we'll build the layout. Okay, so these would not have been there originally. That graph was put there in a previous step, if you recall. I'm just going to drag it over to the side here a little bit. And this map, if you don't not quite happy with the zoom of it right now, you can Change the zoom the same way you would in data view. I can use this zoom tool and do that. Zoom in a little bit. I can zoom in a little more, zoom out a bit. You know, do all of those normal zooming things. The main things that you want to have on a, uh, a layout are a title, a scale, a legend, a north arrow. So those can all be found in this insert menu. This is key for layout. Insert. Data frame for another time. Title. Gotta have a title. Right now it's saying Tasman Canada, that's from a previous thing I did. So this is uh, population by province. Title doesn't need to be artistic, it just needs to describe what it's a map of. Okay, back to the insert menu. A neat line. A neat line border, it's already there. But you can put a neat line border, it just sort of helps set off uh, the map visually. A legend is critical. This side shows all the layers that we have cities, rivers, Great Lakes, other lakes, Canada one. Cities, rivers, Great Lakes, other lakes, Canada one. This side shows the ones that are going to appear in the legend. I want my cities layer in there because we did stuff with it, the size of symbols matters. I want my Canada one there because the shading patterns for population matter. But the rivers, that doesn't need to be there. The Great Lakes, I don't need a legend for that or for the other lakes. So these are the only items I actually want in my legend. I can give it a title if I want. I can change the font color if I want. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm happy with what there is. This is kind of cool. It's usually good to have some sort of a border on your legend. I like to put a bit of a background on it. Uh, just because sometimes it covers over a little bit of the map and I don't want it to sort of showing through. Uh, there is a white <coughs> option there. If you want to put a drop shadow, you can do a drop shadow. Um, just to show what you do, I'll do that. And next, the rest of these things, uh, I don't need to bother. So there's my legend. You can see it's got that great drop shadow, very artistic. And I drag that to wherever I want. I might make that just a little smaller. So you can sort of play with that as you wish. I'm also going to insert a north arrow. Greatest selection of north arrows ever assembled, right here. Choose one you like. Choose one you like. I like that one. Okay, where is it? It's come right in the middle of Saskatchewan. I don't need to bother with that. I'll put it up here in the north appropriately enough, I'll make it a bit bigger. And I'm going to have to insert a scale bar. And again, lots of options of scale bar here. I like that one. Now, before you hit OK, I like to go to Properties because I want to change the units to kilometers. This is Canada. I'll click OK. And there's my scale. It's smart enough that if I adjust the zoom on the map, it'll automatically adjust that scale there too. So, everything you need is in the insert menu. Title, neat line, legend, 
right there, scale bar. These are other things you can add in, but let's not do things we don't need to worry about too much right now. Let's hit a save. And then finally, we want to export that map as a JPEG. You, this, this is a stage where you could go print as well, but we, we're not printing. We're just going to export it. So from the file menu, export map. And it's going to give you different file type options. I think the default one it first shows you as EMF, but I don't want that. I want JPEG. And then I give it a name. And I call it uh, demo pop map. Just something that hopefully identify it for me. Choose where I want to save it. Save. And now uh, that is now on my desktop demo pop map. There is that map. I can't edit this. I can't do anything to it right now. That's just on my finished product. Okay. So I can go back in here now. And that's now saved. So now if I want to go back in and start changing the map, putting in different variables in here, for example, hint, hint, because that's coming next. You know, I can map asthma. I can map emissions. I can change the color ramp. I can do other things that I want to do. I can click off a layer if I don't really want it there, all those things. And as long as I just update my title and then export them, then I have new ones made again.